two and a three we call three and several could be four five or seven a decade is ten while a dozen is twelve and a cross is one hundred forty four oh i'm more than the name for a noun or two just that it's bigger than what we're used to. It stands for six hundred two sextillion two hundred quintillion. It stands for six hundred two sextillion two hundred quintillion. A mole is a number, a number, a number. A mole is a number, and that's all. You can have a mole of cats, you can have a mole of dogs, you can have a mole of ions or a mole of molecules. You can have a mole of copper, you can have a mole of gold, you can have a mole of hydrogen or gallons. You can have a mole of people, but we're not there yet. You can hold a mole of atoms in your hand. You can drink a mole of water, that is molecules of water in just one big gulp to beat the band. A couple is two, and a few we call three, and several could be four, five, or seven. A decade is ten, while a dozen is twelve, and a gross is one hundred forty-four. Oh, I'm more than the name for a noun or two, just that it's bigger than what we're used to. It stands for six hundred two sextillion two hundred quintillion. It stands for six hundred two sextillion two hundred quintillion. Hope you had fun with that song. It's one of my favorites. I want to introduce you to the mole concept. The mole is a number, as you heard in that song, but it's a huge number. It's still just a number, though. A mole is a collection of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. So there's the number. It's huge. And those particles may be atoms, molecules, ions or electrons in chemistry. So just like a dozen is 12 or a gross is 144, a mole stands for a number and that's 6.02 times 10 to the 23. But just how big is that number? It's really hard to relate to a number that is this big. So let's try and see if we can make sense of the enormity of this number. If 6 billion people on Earth were to do nothing but count the atoms in one mole of an element 24 hours a day, at the rate of one atom per second, it would take four million years. One mole of seconds represents a span of time four million times as long as the Earth has already existed. It's crazy! One mole of marbles is enough marbles to cover the entire Earth. How many times do you think? Once? Twice? Three, a hundred, fifty miles! Oh my gosh! And yet there's one mole of water molecules, 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules of water, and only 18 milliliters of water. That is how small atoms are. It's crazy! The mole serves as a bridge between the invisible world of atoms and the macroscopic world of materials and objects. It's a conversion factor. It's also known as Avogadro's number, named in honor of Count Amadeo Avogadro. There's his lovely picture. Holy moly. Well, how did they determine this value, you may be thinking? Well, through the years, there have been various methods that scientists have used in determining Avogadro's number. Perrin, a French physicist, made measurements of Brownian motion, and he found the number of molecules per mole to be 6.8 times 10 to the 23rd. He was the first to use the term Avogadro constant. Rutherford later performed an experiment using helium produced by alpha decay of certain radioactive nucleides. He calculated it to be 6.16 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Millikan did an oil drop experiment and found the accepted value to be 6.023 times 10 to the 23 electrons. And then it was perfected even further to use X-ray diffraction of crystals. And this is done with calcite, which is calcium carbonate, CaCO3. And we have now dis decided <laughs> to find the number of atoms in exactly 12 grams of carbon-12 to be this number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So as I keep saying, one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd things. 
It's a conversion factor. But wait, there's more. There's a periodic table connection as well. Now we've talked about the mass on the periodic table listed as the atomic mass unit using AMUs. Well, what if we had a mole of atoms? What would we do then? We use the same number, just with different units. So instead of AMUs, we switch it to grams per mole. We call this the molar mass of a substance. Picture it this way. A dozen elephants have a different weight than a dozen rabbits. But in each case, you still have a dozen animals. Similarly, a mole of oxygen gas, O2, has a different weight or mass than a mole of water, H2O. But in each case, you still have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules. Why would we use moles anyway? Well, moles were defined to solve the problem of counting large numbers of particles. With moles, you count the number of particles in the sample by weighing it. So let's see if you have the whole mole thing down. Um, if you have a mole of carbon, how many atoms do you have? A mole of water, how many molecules do you have? A mole of calcium ions, how many ions do you have? Well, the answer to all those three is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. If you have a mole of donuts, how many donuts do you have? Yeah, that's right, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And if you have a mole of, oh, um, sorry, oh, I gave it away. If you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd M&Ms, how much candy do you have? A mole. If you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 French fries, how much potato do you have? A mole. And if you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of carbon monoxide, how much carbon monoxide do you have? That's right, a mole. Now, here are some interesting conversions. You might want to pause at this point and write this particular slide down in your notes. And we are going to be using this to do some sample calculations. So, pause right now. All right, let's try some mole conversions. When we do mole conversions, we are visiting what we call the land of mole city. Sorry about that, having some problems with this. Okay, so if we're going away from mole city, we want to multiply by the conversion factor and go out towards that part of city. And if we're going towards mole city, we want to divide by the conversion factor. So in other words, you have to go through the mole in order to get from mass to number of particles. Or if you want to go from number of particles to mass, you have to get go through the mole. So look, what am I talking about? Let's do some samples here. All right, so here's a sample problem. We have a silicon chip used in integrated circuits of microcomputers, and they have a mass of 5.68 milligrams. How many silicon atoms are present in the chip? All right, so it's a conversion problem. Let's start with the 5.68 milligrams, and we are trying to get to how many silicon atoms. All right, so we start with our given. And we want to get out of milligrams, so we go from milligrams to grams, just like that. We want to get rid of the milligram unit. We have to put that down below, and we can then go directly to grams. And then we need to somehow convert grams to particles. But wait, there isn't a step to do that. There isn't one way to do that. You have to go through Mole City. So you get out your handy-dandy periodic table and you find the mass of one mole of silicon, in this case. It happens to be 28.09 grams. And then one mole of silicon goes on top. Now, if we were to finish this problem right now, we would end up with our answer in moles of silicon. But that's not what we wanted. We wanted to have particles. So we need to keep going. And there we go, in atoms. Okay, so one mole has 6.02 times 10 to the 23 in it, atoms, okay? So I've set this up. We've gone from milligrams to grams, grams to moles, and moles to atoms. Lovely convenient steps, and our answer ends up being 1.22 times 10 to the 20th atoms of silicon. 
Notice I have three sig figs. I started with three. Everything in the middle is known as uh, our, our exact numbers or accepted values. So the beginning number is what limits our sig figs. All right, let's try another problem. Diamond is a natural form of pure carbon. A diamond contains uh, 5.0 times 10 to the 21 atoms of carbon. How many moles of carbon and how many grams of carbon are in this diamond? Okay. Start with our given. And in order to get atoms to cancel, we'll need to put atoms down below. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of them. And that's for one mole. And our answer ends up being 8.3 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of carbon. And then there was further question was, how many grams is that? So we look to our periodic table, find the mass of one mole of carbon as 12.01 grams. Use your calculator. Mass ends up being 0 0.099 grams of carbon.